The Florida State House passed on Friday one of this session's most controversial bills that would, among other components, amp up enforcement and penalties to violence and vandalism specifically during protests. This bill was one of Governor DeSantis' top priorities for the session and it passed along party lines. Now it's going to head over to the state Senate where its future is uncertain. This morning, we have two of the leading voices in the debate over HB1. As it is known, State Senator Jason Pizzo is a Democrat from Northeast Miami-Dade. He is the chair of the Senate Criminal Justice Committee, where the bill has been bottled up. State Representative Juan Fernandez Barquin is a Republican who represents a portion of Southwest Miami-Dade. He has been one of the bill's prime sponsors in the House, and he delivered closing arguments for it on Friday. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to see you. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, good morning. Great. Representative uh, Fernandez Marquin, let me begin with you. Since you spoke out for the bill, I watched your remarks on the Florida Channel on Friday. Uh, I guess the point would be Florida already has many laws on the book that make rioting illegal and allow police to crack down on anybody who takes part in a riot who would uh, harm someone else, who would destroy property. So why does the Combating Public uh, Disorder Act, why is it needed? Good morning, Michael, thank you. Uh, you know, that's a fantastic question and many, many other representative at, representatives asked me that same question. And the bottom line is that if we look at the definition of riot currently as it stands in law, which was determined by a state Supreme Court case in 1975, and it's a 45 year old definition, the definition itself is outdated. Uh, if you take a look at it, it, it mentions things like tumultuous disturbance, terror of the people, unlawful enterprise. I mean, what we've done with this bill is improve upon the definition in order to protect our residents protect businesses, protect property, protect law enforcement, and most of all, protect peaceful protesters so that law enforcement can distinguish, and they're not using this vague, ambiguous language so they can distinguish between what's a peaceful protester and what's a rioter. So Jason Pizzo, let's join the yes. conversation here. Michael had mentioned that this is sort of bottled up in the Senate and the reason it's bottled is because of you. You chair the <laughs> Criminal Justice Committee and it's not even on your agenda this week. So take a crack at the uh, the con on this. Uh, there are several cons in, in, in many of the sections. There's one redeemable section as it relates to doxing and giving out people's personal information for harassment. But the bulk of the bill is is really Candidly, nothing more than a bullet point for a mailer for the governor, either for re-election or for something else. You know, when farmers need something uh, as it relates to agriculture, they reach out to the legislatures and and, and draft something. When when CPAs or insurance companies need something, or you know, our constituents are suffering, they reach out and we we draft accordingly. We're doing that with unemployment. We're going to do that uh, with a number with insurance as well. Businesses ask for COVID liability. No law enforcement officer ever called Representative Fernandez Barkeen or me. Uh, during any part of last year asking for this. This was simply a proposal and an announcement, uh, whimsical at best, by the governor, and it's unnecessary. We, we've had protests in this country uh, for a very long time and for very good reasons, uh, none of which uh, really interfere with the, the livelihood or the, uh, the daily actions of Representative Barkeen or myself. So as long as you're mentioning the curtain, Re Representative Barkeen, so take us through the behind the scenes. Who, how, you are the sponsor of this bill. Did you come up with this one morning? Did someone ask you to do this? How, how did this bill bubble up into your consciousness? Oh, Glenda, I knew that question was coming. Uh, so, I mean, as, as we all know, the governor meant, made references to a bill after, after the, uh, the rioting uh, that occurred over the summer. And, and I, quite frankly, volunteered for it because I was touched by a very, a very sad situation uh, that occurred in my own district that if if you recall and I believe your channel covered it It's the uh, there was a statute of Jesus Christ. that was beheaded at uh, the Church of Good Shepherd And that's that's literally five blocks away from my house and that occurred in, in July of 2020 and there were there were strong suspicions that those uh, individuals who engaged in that nefarious activity uh, were were out uh, outlaws um, I'm sorry, uh, you know wrongdoers criminals um, and, and there was a whole string of other attacks throughout the county on, on religious institutions. And I felt that, uh, that those individuals
deserve to be punished punished just as just as much as as the rioters. And there is a segment in my bill that that deals with memorials and deals with historical property. So I called up the speaker's office and I and I volunteered yeah. and I said, hey, listen, if something comes down the pipe, I I want to be I want to be the guy carrying it because I want to protect my residents. I want to protect the private property or law enforcement, and and I want to make sure that uh that that criminals. Uh, get the punishment that yeah. they deserve. Representative Arcane, I remember that really ugly incident, the vandalism where the head of Jesus was, in fact, uh, taken off the statue. But that was, as I recall, a deranged individual, somebody who was sick, uh, who was subsequently arrested. I mean, the real cause for HB1 were the Black Lives Matter protests that occurred in Miami, uh, Tampa, Jacksonville, in late May and early June after the killing of George Floyd. I mean, that is the impetus. Is it not for the bill? Michael, I would say protests, no. Riots, yes. We cannot forget that Bayside was looted. It and was. there's several videos. There's several videos of it. We can't forget that there were four police cars burned in downtown Miami. Uh, we can't forget that there was a Champ Sports building that was burned down in Tampa. And there were several small businesses that were affected that put, put these small businesses and families out of business. And, and we can't forget that this also occurred in Jacksonville. So I would say protests, no, riots, yes. The riots were the impetus for this. And it wasn't just here. I mean, clearly across the nation, there was over $2 billion worth of damages, uh, roughly over 2,000 police officers injured. Uh, and and, and so, so I would say the impetus was, was the violent acts. So the Jason, uh, Jason Pizzo, there already were laws against all of those things that were just mentioned. The, this mm -hmm. bill sort of amps up the penalties for those. But when it, when it went through the House in every committee and the floor vote, this was a party line vote. So as a Democratic senator, really what, what is wrong with enforcing and, and amping up penalties for this destructive and violent behavior? What's wrong with this bill on face value? Why wouldn't everyone embrace a, a crackdown on wrongdoing? It's a, a, a fair question. We will take an a la carte sort of approach, as we should, and a very deliberate one based on data. Now, the narrative, and, and I don't mean to draw it so partisan, unfortunately, it is, but the, the data is very important because the narrative on the other side, so to speak, is about how people are being arrested and then they're let, they're let out and they're right back into the into the fray and they're being rearrested again. That's crap. 298 people were arrested in Tampa on uh, May 30th into the morning of the 31st, another 68 on June 2nd, uh, 13 in Tallahassee, uh, a, a bunch in Jacksonville and some in Miami. Nobody was rearrested. But that's been the narrative, you know, for several months now from the other side of the aisle. The irony here is, and I even commented to, to Representative yesterday, he used to be a public defender. I was the prosecutor. So, I mean, you know, the kids that are watching today with, with, with grandma and grandpa, I mean, that, that's the ultimate irony. There's several sections of this bill that are just wrong. If a kid in college gets in a shoving match, shoving match, he's doing six months in jail. Yeah. Senator, let me ask you, in fact, I know you are a former assistant state attorney in Miami-Dade. You know, there is a provision in this bill that says that anybody who was arrested as a rioter uh, would have to remain in jail until their initial court appearance. That seems to be a denial of due process, doesn't it? Well, we do have, we do have that provision. You know, there's a whole list of criteria on, on, on safety for, for society, securing a presence, a continuing threat. We have that for murderers and rapists uh, and domestic violence situations where there should be a, a cooling off period. The fastest process time in and out of TGK in Miami-Dade, as I'm sure you guys know, is at best five hours. So it's, it's, it's a false narrative. We have kids that will basically, and I say kids because uh, folks, I mean, this is, these, are, these are kids expressing themselves you know, very often. And it, to Representative Barkeen's point about we need these laws, we need these laws, this is not a new phenomenon. If, we, if this was mid-1868 and we were drafting the new version of the Florida Constitution, I would understand. But we've had protests, we've had things that escalated into riots and looting, and we have laws on the books for those. So, Legislature has found them to be appropriate for years. I Senator, was Senator, I, I just want to, I'm, I hate to interrupt. We go through this every week. Interrupting on Skype for a very good reason. we got to take a break. Um, but we will pick this right up when we come back. Thank you.
We are talking on This Week in South Florida with State Senator Jason Pizzo from Northeast Miami-Dade, State Representative uh, Juan Alfonso Fernandez Barquin from Southwest Miami-Dade. Representative Barquin, let me ask you, you're clearly aware, you're a lawyer, well-educated, uh, protesting, demonstrating in this country is as American as apple pie. I mean, we had the Boston Tea Party uh, in the 60s. There were marches for civil rights, for uh, public accommodation. I remember because I was a kid, I marched in some of those. Uh, and they changed uh, laws, they changed uh, inequities, they, you know, made progress. Uh, so what is it about, is there something about demonstrating, protesting, that you find objectionable? Michael, uh, protests are fine, and protests are, are completely legal. The issue here is when, when the protests turn violent and th they start damaging businesses, they start damaging private property, they start uh, injuring innocent individuals. I mean, protests are absolutely fine. And, and you know, and, and, and something that I found during the debate uh, yes, yesterday, uh, I'm sorry, on Friday, and, and in a lot of the questions I got on, on Thursday on my bill, is that th there seems to be across the aisle uh, it's this obfuscation where they're interchangeably using protesters and rioters. Protesters and rioters are two completely different individuals. The protesters are there for a cause, to try and get a message across. And the rioters are there to, to, that are trying to, get, trying to get a free flat screen TV from, or, or trying to get some, uh, some shoes from the Foot Locker. That's a, okay, they're, representative, they're the that's, a, that's a very fair point in that distinction. Um, Senator Pizzo, in the short time we have left, I want to sort of take a look at another component to the bill that I think, I don't want to put words Linda. in your mouth, but I, I just want to, there, the efforts to what this bill is calling defund the police, reallocate uh, sure. a, a local decision to reallocate police resources would be cir uh, possibly circumvented by the state those decisions locally now taken away. That is part of this bill. Address that if you would. I will quickly, it's a very, very important issue. Glenna, nobody in my district wants to defund the police. Nobody in my district wants fewer police officers on the street, nobody. False narrative, very effective in a campaign, not reality. Nobody in my district wants to defund the police. The problem is, is that if anybody's cutting back across the board ecumenically on a budget, parks and recreation, you know, little league teams and things like that, Everybody's cutting back. The, own, the governor himself has asked each and every single one of his agency heads to look at three to six percent reductions in cutbacks. That was the basis of why I was upset and rather disturbed a meeting last week in criminal justice appropriations because there was a $140 million cut to the Department of Corrections, $11.8 million cut to the state attorney's office, and over $3 million cut to public defenders. I was incensed by it. I think it's I think it's unrealistic. But how can you say that the statewide agencies are going to have a cutback, but there might not be a cutback? You don't think the commercial revenue and the tax basis for places like Miami Beach that didn't have any spring break revenue last year, or a number of my commercial businesses are, are going to have to be paying less in property taxes, which is less revenue for cities and counties, which means they may have to cut back uh, and, and tighten the belt a little bit. It's hypocritical. It's, yeah, it's, you know, yeah. Senator Senator Pizzo and Representative Barkeen, we are just about out of time. Just in 10 seconds or so, Senator Pizzo, are you going to let this uh, bill, uh, HB1, the Senate version, get out of your committee? It'll never be heard in my committee, but they'll do an end run around me. And it'll go to another one. It'll, they'll take the House bill. It'll probably go to rules in the Senate. It'll be heard once. It'll go to the floor. But, I mean, you know, for Representative Barkeen's got to wear Grandma's ugly Christmas sweater for a while. <laughs> I feel like we should let you have the last word on Barkeen, but we're out of time. Well, just really quick, I just want to say that violence discredits the cause of the protest. And that's the bottom line here. Fair point. And we cannot right. forget that. Fair point. Appreciate we you we both. got it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And come this back soon. Thank you.